happy weekend. In today's video, I'm gonna be chatting with you guys about using retinol on your neck and anti-aging for the neck. And I'm also, oh, my new desk came. I'm gonna show you guys that because I set it up last night. I'm also gonna show you guys some cruelty-free, and I'll explain why I'm doing that in air quotes, uh, skincare products for just a basic skincare routine in a minute. And I'm also, of course, gonna go run some errands because I didn't do that yesterday. I'll probably go to Costco. I wanna get some more apples to make my slow cooker applesauce. And tonight, I'm gonna update you guys on some cleansers. So yeah, that's what's going on. So the skin of the neck is thin and it's one of the first places to show aging. Wrinkles, sagging, discoloration, etc. Of course, photo protection is key. Because the skin there is so thin, ultraviolet radiation, the UVA rays penetrate into the deeper layers, destroy the collagen, and that results in sagging and prominent lines. Also, you know, bending your head to look down at devices can cause horizontal creasing. That's called tech neck. I have a whole video on that. And then, of course, sun exposure leads to hyperpigmentation, etc. So you need to be obviously putting sunscreen there and wearing like scarves and things like that. That is an essential, but you probably already knew that at this point from any number of my videos. Now, retinol or retinoic acid, as you guys know, is kind of the power horse in terms of improving wrinkles. It increases collagen production with long-term consistent use. You have prescription retinoic acid, aka tretinoin, <clears throat> and then you have other generations of retinoids like tazerotene and adapalene. And of course, you also have over-the-counter retinols and retinaldehyde. They're not retinoic acid in its active state. Your skin has to do a little bit of work on those. Um, now, when it comes to using retinol on the neck, yes, you can, but you've gotta be very careful. Because the skin there is so thin, it's very prone to a lot more irritation, and that can worsen hyperpigmentation and just cause a lot of problems for you. So the best way to go about using retinol on the neck to improve the visible signs of photoaging is to go slow and be very conservative. I, for example, if you were given a tube of tretinoin cream and it's your first time using it, I do not recommend, I mean, talk with your doctor obviously, but you could run into a lot of problems if you just start slathering it on your neck. Think about it, the skin there is so thin and you're not used to it and that can cause a lot of problems. It's better, in my opinion, to um, try something a little bit softer, like a retinol. Your skin has to do a little bit of work on it before it's in its active state. It's gentler. Even a retinol, though, can be super irritating, especially, you know, a lot of good retinols over the counter, they're kind of the sustained, slow release, sustained action. So you may think like, oh, this is gentle, I'm not getting any irritation, you start putting it on every day but boom, all of a sudden it's like, because it kind of accumulates in that slow release manner, you get a lot of irritation. So choosing a retinol for the neck is fine. Uh, you know, most retinols like the Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair Regenerating Cream that I recommend could be used on the neck, but just use a teeny tiny amount. You don't need a ton and you only need to use it a few nights a week. Um, for it to be effective. I think people have this idea that they need to like constantly be graduating to the next thing when it comes to skincare, but you could really just stick to a basic cosmeceutical retinol, using it two, three nights a week, teeny tiny amount to the neck, and just be super patient, and with time, that can help. Um, you know, it, it doesn't have to be prescription strength to ultimately end up helping boost up collagen production in the deeper layers of the skin, smoothing out wrinkles, improving the look of photo aging, provided it's done in conjunction with aggressive sun protection. So using a retinol is more than reasonable on the neck, but you've got to be super conservative with it. One thing I strongly recommend though, in terms of tech neck, is getting a laptop elevator. Oh my gosh, that has made, I mean, I think I talked about this it was in my 2020 lifestyle favorites. I'll show you guys my laptop stand. It's made a huge difference in just me not like bending my, my head forward and making that horizontal crease on my neck. I'll show you. Yeah, here's the laptop elevator. It really has made a huge difference and you can kind of adjust the height too if you want it taller. I'll link it down below. I got it on Amazon. It was not expensive and it has really been saving me. All right, let me grab my talking liquid here and I'll take you guys over to show you my new desk 
it's a corner desk. I got this on Amazon. I put it together last night. Um, I got it for the express purpose of putting my new arrow garden on it, which is kind of obscuring the look of the, the lighting up from the arrow gardens kind of obscuring the look of the desk. But this was actually pretty straightforward to put together. Um, you do need a screwdriver, which surprised me. 99% of all the furniture I've ever purchased has been something that could be assembled with an Allen wrench. So having to actually pull out my screwdriver, I was like, what? Um, but yeah, it's cute. It's got a little drawer and then this bottom shelf. I just thought it'd be perfect for here. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So yes, I did get a new arrow garden for Christmas. I still have my other one over here with the herbs thriving and jiving. Love this. Like I said, I eat on it every night, but I wanted to get another one because I'm doing, and I just put them in, um, the incredible edibles. They are edible flowers. There's like calendula, Okay, I wanted to share with you guys some products from Simple. I bought these myself. This is not PR or anything. I got these actually on iHerb. Um, and Simple is a brand, you know, I said earlier in air quotes, cruelty-free, because if you really do a deep dive into the cruelty-free blogs and things, they'll actually say that this is not cruelty-free on these blogs. But anyways, like they've got the bunny on there. So always be aware of the fact that cruelty-free is not a regulated term, so it could mean anything. Um, but Simple calls himself cruelty-free. Um, anyways, and, and you might consider them cruelty-free. It all kind of depends on what you're looking for when you say cruelty-free. Um, okay, so their foaming facial cleanser. This is a good one for people who have oily, sensitive skin. It's a little on the drying side, but not too bad. I've tried it multiple times. It kind of reminds me of the Hadalabo foaming cleanser. Now, their replenishing rich moisturizer is just a great basic moisturizer you could use at nighttime. Um, and you could also use it in the morning if you're somebody who has a really dry skin, put it on, allow it to absorb fully, and then you wanna put a sunscreen on over it. Now, I looked on their website. They only have an SPF 15 sunscreen, which is not enough. Um, so I, you know, I wish they would come out with a better sunscreen and it's a Unilever brand. So, you know, they should be able to get on that. Now this product I've gotten a lot of questions about over the years, the hydrating booster. I've got to say, you guys, I was a little, I've, I've been trying this out and I'm not impressed. I thought it would be a dupe or an alternative to the Hydra Boost product that I've always recommended. This has like some polymers and stuff. So I don't know, it, it feels kind of like you're just putting water on your skin and then it kind of dries filmy. So I have been, I have not been impressed with this. Comment below if anybody else has used it, what your experience with it was, but I do like the foaming cleanser. I think it's a good one. And I do like this replenishing rich moisturizer, which also is vegan, by the way, that's good. It's hard to find things that are vegan. <clears throat> they used to have, and I think they still have some version of it. They just rebranded it. They had this micellar gel cleanser. That was amazing. Sharing with you guys my outfit for today. I got this on Amazon, this little corduroy drum jumper. I was sitting down at my desk, so it's wrinkled now. But it's actually pretty cute, and I'm pretty happy with it. I was a little suspicious of it. It was very inexpensive. But the quality is not bad. It has a zipper on the side and a front pocket. I got size extra small, and I was worried that it was gonna be too short, but it's actually just right. Um, it, you know, it doesn't ride up too much. I'm wearing, I'm wearing bike shorts on underneath because I love the, I love bike shorts. This top I also got from Amazon a long time ago and I just put it on underneath. So yeah, and I'm doing the braid today. I'm doing the braid today because I cannot be bothered with my hair flying all over the place. Well, hey guys, I'm on my way out to run errands. This morning I put on Exuviant's uh, sunscreen and I reapplied it, but on my legs, I'm wearing the Black Girl Kid sunscreen. I really love that stuff. That is definitely, Am I making predictions already for 2021 sunscreen favorites? I think that's definitely going to make it because it's just so lightweight, quick absorbing, non-greasy, doesn't pill, doesn't ball. I mean, they really did a good job with that product. I like it. You know, I haven't tried the SPF 30, but I don't know that I'm gonna bother because the 50 is so good. The Shell Station is a little slow to take down their holiday decor. I guess it's probably city 
city decor, but the Christmas tree is still rocking here outside of the Shell station. <laughs> I wonder if their car wash is up in action. I typically have gone to their car wash in the past, the little drive through, but it was recently closed. I don't want to deal with it today, but. All right, I'm here at Costco, of course. I'm gonna put on my mask before I go in. But speaking of neck, I've got my neck scarf, the UPF 51 that I got on the Amazonian a while ago. I'll link it down below. It's very comfortable. And I don't know, right now our weather is probably what most people would think of as like early fall. It's crisp, but not cold. So it's actually very nice. I've just got this little light army. Is this an army jacket? I forget what the fashion name for this jacket is but this was a target find a few years ago i get so much use out of this thing if you live somewhere cold it'll be completely useless to you but for here it's perfect you know when there's just like a little bit of a chill um and you need an extra layer i love it so yeah i put it over the corduroy jumper and matches really well really doing well aren't i guys on my 2021 goal of wearing brighter colors i introduced brown today wow that is definitely upgrading from gray we've got brown green i'm <laughs> i'm a homemaker badge away from a girl scout <laughs> Speaking of Girl Scout, what is your favorite Girl Scout cookie? I learned recently, even though I was a Girl Scout, um, once a Girl Scout, always a Girl Scout, I don't know. Um, I learned that the names of the Girl Scout cookies have to do with where the manufacturing plant is that makes them. But that's why they vary. But my favorites, I actually like them all, truthfully. I always had a soft spot, of course, for the Caramel Delights, that's what they were called, but now people call them Samoas. We didn't call them that, we called them Caramel Delights. Caramel Delights are amazing. Peanut Butter Patties, I think they have some other name now. And the uh, Thin Mints are really good. But I also always enjoyed the um, trefoils they were called the shortbread ones because i like shortbread but those don't get enough love do they still make those i know they introduce new ones from time to time and they even had a vegan one sorry my camera battery so rudely cut me off in my very important discussion on girl scout cookies but they had a vegan one wasn't it like mexican wedding cookie style i feel like they had i don't know maybe i dreamt that yeah, I don't think I've had a Girl Scout cookie in a long time because the Girl Scouts, they're always set up selling the cookies when I don't have time to deal with it. And I don't know, when I was a Girl Scout, we literally went door to door. That seems to be non-existent these days. I've never had a Girl Scout in my adult life knock on my door. Um, I mean, I've always lived in apartments, but there have always been children and Girl Scouts, presumably, who could come knock on my door. I don't know. When I was a child, this is this is the uh, time that I lived. You guys are like, I'm so sick of your old timer stories. But when I was a Girl Scout, I literally went door to door soliciting cookie orders. I had this like little, they gave you back then, they gave you like this uh, brochure that you could show the cookies and then you would write down the person's name and address and it was like a little a little graph and you'd check a box of which cookies they wanted and how many and i remember i had one neighbor that i would hit up who would haggle with me she'd be like well can you give me two for one like a two for one since i'm your neighbor i mean she would really haggle and you would think Oh, she was probably joking with you. I don't think she was. I mean, this neighbor, this neighbor was fiscally responsible. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> and she would haggle with me. Oh my God, look at these cute storage boxes. <laughs> Hedgehog, owl, cat, unicorn, fox, and raccoon. $17.99, two pack. Sea and sand candles, three-piece set of soy candles, $14.99. Those are pretty. 
But do they smell good is the real question. No way to know through a mask and a box. Yes, did I get in more sizes? I'm not falling for the orchid trap. Although well, this is a fake one, so. And by orchid trap, I mean you always get lured to buy orchids because they're so pretty and then they just don't, at least for me, they don't ever hold up. But I'm liking this fake one. How much is it? $30? Hmm. It might actually look nice on my little shelf in the living room behind me where I film. But I don't know. Snap! <laughs> I love stuff like this. I kind of need more of these. Except I don't. Mine are still in perfectly good condition. I don't need 30. How many? Oh, 50? Yeah, I definitely don't need 50. Or is it? Oh, it's 25. 25 containers, 25 lids. No. <laughs> this is new. Wild Friends creamy, creamy peanut butter. Has anyone had this peanut butter? How does it compare to the Costco peanut butter? Just making myself a <clears throat> jasmine green tea. Can you see that? Is anybody else like totally soothed by the smell of jasmine tea? Like, I don't know. It just gives me that cozy Chinese restaurant vibe. Like you're in a booth in a Chinese restaurant sipping on jasmine tea. I love it. I finally went ahead and gave my corksicle new cup a try. And I actually really like it for tea. It keeps it hot. And I love this handle too. So yeah, thank you Carousel for sending that to me. Well, hey guys, I just got out of the shower. I am loving this new hair towel that I shared with you guys last weekend. It is really good. It's not inexpensive, however, it was sent to me. So be warned, but it's actually really good. What did I say the brand was? I can't remember. Um, Aqui. Aqui, 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 aqui. I don't know why. I feel like that should be a little dance. <laughs> Anyways, I just finished my skincare routine, but I wanted to update you guys because yesterday I shared with you all that I had just gotten this in the mail from iHerb. I bought it. It's the Sauna Soy Milk Cleanser. Now, y'all know I love sauna products. They are amazing. Love the soy milk lotion, the creams. I mean, yeah, I have a whole review on Asana. Anyways, I got this and OMG, it burns like the dickens in the eyes. So I'm gonna end up using it as a body wash to remove water resistant sunscreen from the body. Works well for that purpose. I tried that last night, but it, it stings too much in the eye. So I did not use it tonight. Instead, I used another new cleanser that I also bought from iHerb. It is a good one, you guys. It's the Eucerin Sensitive Skin Gentle Hydrating Foaming Cleanser. This does a really good job even without double cleanse, like without using a cleansing oil or cleansing balm to break up the water resistant sunscreen, it'll just take it off. But it's super gentle. It does have sodium laureth sulfate, um, which is a, you know, kind of mild surfactant. It's not as mild as like an alkyl glucoside. Um, and so it, because it has that, you might find that it's a little drying depending on your skin type. But I don't know, I find it actually to be not drying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anyways, I really like it. I've used it before. Uh, you know, a lot of foaming cleansers, they tend to be more on the drying side. They tend to have a little bit of a, you know, stronger surfactant. It's not always the case. It's not, you know, foaming, yes, more drying, but it's often the case that it is. And in this case, um, because it has sodium lauryl sulfate, you know, it is more, it's more, it's a good one. You can, you know, if you have oily skin that's sensitive, definitely try this. It's quite good. A foaming cleanser, however, that's good, but is even more dry. I mean, this isn't drying. Why do I keep saying that? Um, it's, it's not, it's more drying than, this one's more drying than like the CeraVe cream cleanser. This is actually kind of similar to the CeraVe foaming cleanser. There you go. That's what I was trying to say. But it is um, not as drying. More A foaming cleanser that is more drying than that. 
<laughs> is the La Roche Posay Tolerian Foaming Cleanser. Now that one is too drying for me, I find. It's just too drying. But this one is just right. It's not too creamy um, so that it does good on its own, just taking off the water resistant sunscreen without a lot of like rubbing or whatnot. Um, and it, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, where am I going with this? It's gentle and it removes oiliness without being stripping. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. I really like it. So I'll put this one down below. Oh, the best part about this, it's like less than eight bucks. Score! So yeah, that's a really good cleanser. As a side note, another good cleanser, which surprised me. I don't know if I updated you guys on this. Uh, or not, it's the Aromatica <laughs> Rose Infusion Cream Cleanser. I got this in my Yes Style Advent Calendar. Um, the, whole, the Advent Calendar that I love so much and I finished it. It was better than I expected. Yes, it does have a strong rose fragrance, but I kind of grew to enjoy that a little bit. Anyways, it's very good. It's a creamy cleanser but it does end up foaming up. So it's it's actually kind of more like this in terms of dryingness. Uh, it does a good job taking off oiliness, in other words. So that's a good one if you have oily sensitive skin and you don't mind the fragrance. Fragrance is less of an issue and things that you rinse off the skin. Wow, I'm really communicating clearly today, aren't I? Anyways, this, um, it just burns and stings in the eyes. I don't know what it is because the ingredients are all in Japanese. I'll have to go back on the iHerb website and, um, and look and see if there's something in there, like a surfactant that's particularly burny or what, I don't know. Anyway, speaking of YesStyle K-Beauty Advent Calendar, still loving the I'm From Fig Cleansing Balm. Uh, I'm actually... I'm gonna finish it definitely before the next empties video. It's good. It does have fragrance in it, as do a lot of cleansing balms, but like I just said, rinsing it off, less of an issue for, you know, irritation and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's a little cleanser update. Oh, you guys, I'm wearing a t-shirt that a viewer sent me, and it says, can you see it? Well, hey guys, it says, hey guys, on the front, and then on the back, I don't know if you can see. Sunscreen and subscribe! <laughs> well, hey guys, <laughs> as my shirt says, hey guys, uh, it's much later, and I am going to go to sleep. Hopefully I fall asleep at a good time. You know, I was reading an article about how the nine to five life is pretty much non-existent. People really don't necessarily follow those hours. And as a result, our sleep cycles are like really messed up, uh, that we're staying awake, having trouble, you know, falling asleep and staying asleep and getting eight hours. And that's kind of scary. Um, I have trouble with sleep, but over the past few years, I've really made an effort, and I think I've made substantial improvement in comparison to where I was two or three years ago, especially. Um, just little tiny adjustments, but yeah, sleep is really critical, and I feel like people blow it off, but it changes everything when you get good sleep. It really does. It changes everything. All right, guys, I am going to call it a night so I can get some sleep. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog, and thank you for hanging out with me this weekend. I got a lot of cleaning done. It was very productive, and I could not have done it without you all to keep me company. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.